All right, new episode. Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna have a closer look at how the paint dries. Today the paint dries even more slowly than in the last video. All right, there she goes. Slow and steady. Oh, I think it's dry now. Ah, uh, no, no, not yet. Let's keep watching. All right, all right, all right. It's not quite that bad. We did do a few things other than painting. For one, we put a tarp that covers the entire boat to protect it from the weather going forward. You may wonder why we didn't do this sooner. Well, to be honest, now that it's done there, I wonder that myself. We strapped it down all around with a few sailing ropes to prevent it from flying away all the while leaving enough room to get in and out of the boat and move around freely. We made sure the tarp doesn't touch the roof above the forward cabin so that we can weld around those ceiling hatches. Here's a look out through the rear window. Another thing I did was to cut open a rusty area in the ceiling of the forward cabin. So here's a good one. I just cut open this little square here of the area of metal that was completely rusted through and through. And then what I discovered inside is like piles and piles of rust and debris in there. It's like, it feels like a centimeter or two high of just this debris. And although I can only feel what's in close proximity here, it seems to be all the way back or at least to a good point. So we're gonna have to think of a way how to clear this somehow get rust converter in there. And this is of course the vent that goes from the engine room all the way up here to the outside. This week it was also time to measure the aft cabin's floor so that we can order the wooden floor panels. This allowed me to draw up this plan. Yeah, I'll explain this to you another time. All right, so I just finished measuring the entire floor here and I just want to show you something. Here we have 107. And then on this side we have, yeah, about 110. That's like three centimeters off. And it turns out at least the entire floor structure here was constructed with a two to three centimeters tolerance. So we're gonna have a lot of fun putting those floor panels in. Now, because I did spend most of this week painting in the aft cabin and you've seen enough footage of me painting, for the rest of this video I thought I'd give you a little tour of the boat, an update of all the different little projects we're working on at the moment. Let's start in the aft cabin, where I just finished the second coat of paint. And boy, I can tell you, painting the interior of this boat is really hard work. Because of all the corners and angles and overhanging metal plates, And the fact that there's no proper floor in here does not make things easier. Anyway, it's almost done. I guess I'll give it another final coat and then we're ready for insulation. Here around the new hatch I also painted several layers of paint to get that ready for applying the sealant. I'm really happy how this turned out. It almost looks as if the boat came like this. By the way, there's something I didn't mention in the last video. Is that at some point I spilled the paint bucket. Then I tried to scoop up as much paint as possible and put it on the walls. Anyway, that's why there is such a mess here. Next, let's make a stop over in the engine room. I did some research on the engine and found that it's a Perkins 4236 Marine. As the name suggests, it has a displacement of 236 cubic inches, so a bit over 3.8 liters, and it has 80 something horsepower. I was happy to find out that it's one of the most common and reliable diesel engines from the past 50 to 60 years, which is great because I won't have any trouble finding parts and information about this engine. 
Like this, I found the owner manual and even the workshop manual, both online and for free. So that's a project for some future videos, because to this day I have yet to see this thing running. So yes, I bought this boat without even checking if the engine runs. But the seller guaranteed that it runs, so I took his word for it. If you have any tips and tricks on what to look for, how to proceed to start this engine for the first time after a long idle period, please let me know in the comments. Alright, now on to the last stop of our little tour here in the forward cabin. So we've decided to keep the galley here in the front, at least for the coming season, which means that the bedroom will be in the aft cabin at first. This space here will probably serve as the main head, but only up to here. Like that, we keep this space free for the future, if we decide to move the bed to the front someday. And of course there's much more work left to do here, starting with the roof. These hatches have to be replaced. The metal around the windows needs to be fixed. New seals put in, etc. Plenty of work left here, but that's the material for future videos. See you there!